What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing absolutely fantastic and we're are crammed on time again because I need to go to work today. Anyhow, JavaScript memory game. We're continuing off. Today we're going to be looking at a win screen. So a screen that shows up when you win. Um, and then we're also going to implement the use of images as well. And maybe even a reset button. But I'll look at that in just a little bit later. So. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what we want to do is we want all the buttons to have a default image that's going to show up. And we're going to use inner HTML to change the button's image every single time. So the button has inner HTML. So HTML that's within that button. And that's just something that we can change with JavaScript. So that's what we're going to be using. So first of all, we're going to add the image. So I've already got a folder of resources. So let's go here, let's go resources, let's go cart back. That's the one I want. And I should not go from source. And this is the image that is gonna be, this is the image that we're gonna be having. And I'm just gonna copy this line and I'm gonna put it in every single one of these like inner HTMLs of the buttons. So I'm just gonna select all the IDs again from all the smaller buttons, the single digit ones, and plop that in there. And then we're going to go to all the double digit IDs and plop them in there. There we go. So now we've added images to basically all of the buttons, but they're really big and we should change the size a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the width of these uh, images to 12.5 view width. So that's a nice size. You can also change this if you want to. You can hell, you can set this to 10 for something. It just shrinks, but it will center within the grid. So that's 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 all cool and nice. So you can make it as small, as big as we want. Uh, I, I've set it on 12.5. I think that's a nice compromise. It's nice in the middle. Uh, another thing that we want to do is because of the way event listeners work in JavaScript, they work like a like direct click. So if I'm clicking on a button, you need to click here because if you click on the image, nothing is happening. So in order to fix this, you need to basically pass your click straight through the image. And the way you need to do that is by using pointer events. So what a pointer event does is very simple. Uh, you can set it to listen to particular things or s set it to listen to nothing. So in this case, images, pointer events, it's not gonna listen to anything that has anything to do with clicking. So in this case, the click goes straight through. It goes straight through the image and you don't have to worry about a single thing. So that's very cool. So we are already changing the text content, which in some case could be seen as inner HTML, but it's really not. Be very careful about that. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to change this text methodology to use images instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first click, which is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this text content portion. And instead, we're going to be using e.target.innerHTML. And we're going to set that to an image. So what I want to use is I want to use a string, for example. So here's a string. Um, let's just pull up that into Notepad for just a second so I can remove the tabs. There we go. Don't save. Put that in there. And you'll see that on the first click, well, let's see a minute. Hold on a second. What's going on here? Oh, yeah, because we're still saying card back. So here, card one. So now you can see that on the first click, it's going to change to the card one, and that string works. It's just, a, it's the same string that you see inside this inner HTML. It's this exact same thing. So we're changing the inner HTML, and we're using inner HTML, by the way, so it doesn't show image. SRC as text, like here, watch this. So if I set this to text content, you see what's going to happen? It's just going to put that as text content. The same goes for inner text, for example. That's the same thing. It's just going to set the text. So we don't want that. We want to do inner HTML. So it can actually listen to HTML. And in that case, it returns the image. So with that all done, that means that now we need to actually determine what particular cart is being pressed, what number is being pressed. So in order to do that, we need to use a function. And I've already typed that function out, but I need to paste it in here still. So that function is going to be this one. It's a function get image. And what it is, is basically, it gets a parameter number, which is the event data set number, right? 
and then it has a switch. So a switch is more like a cleaner uh, if statement. Uh, instead of using if, 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 it's just the switch with a couple of cases, which looks a lot cleaner. So if you, you can use a switch, use a switch. Otherwise, you know, use, use if statements. But switch is a lot cleaner, uh, I have to say. So here, I'm going to say switch number, and it's going to check the case. The case means it, that's where it's going to be checked. So this is the if statement. And then it's going to say it needs to be one. And if it is one, or actually if it is one, uh, then return this string. Okay, so we're going to return this image, card one, card two, card three, based on what number it is. So if the number that returns is a one or a two or a three or four or five or six or a seven or an eight, it will return the respectable image that is necessary. So, and the de default is like an else statement. So if any none of these cases are true, then return the card back. So that's what we're going to be uh, using. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the inner HTML, which is going to call get image. And we're going to pass on the event dot target dot data set dot number in it. So in this case, it's going to return the number that is specified in the data set. And in this case, well, we'll see what happens. So that's the first click. Okay. And you can see that it changes. Like depending on what number it is, it sets the right card. Okay, cool. So now that's the first click. Now we also need to do that for the second click. So let's go here. So here is my text changer. Hold on a second. So here's second click. And here we set the data set number. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the get inner HTML instead. So here you can see that what is happening. But now you also need to reset what happens when we have no match. So when we have no match, we don't want to set the text content to nothing. We want to set the image to be zero. So image zero basically means it, 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 it basically means that, well, it's not going to be a one. It's not going to be a two. It's not going to be an eight either. So it's not going to be any of these. So it returns to the default, which is the card back. So in this case, we'll see what happens. It folds back and it sets it to the card back. But currently it only does that for this one. We also need to do that for this one. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to plop this in here, but instead of e.target, I'm going to set that to temp last click button dot inner HTML, get image event of target. Okay, cool. And oh, hold on a second. That's not right. So go and no, that's not correct. Hold on a second. Yeah, set that one to zero as well. And there we go. So now it switches it back to the original card. So here it sets it to zero, here it sets it to zero, which basically returns the card back and resets it. So it, res it sets it to the correct card. And if it's correct, you know, you still get the green background and stuff. So that's all cool. So this is how I have done the entire images setup. It's a very neat little way of getting images inside your in your HTML of your elements and being able to change them. So this is actually very, very easy. So we change the target, the, the event target in our HTML and we put a string in there, which is going to be read like HTML because we used dot in HTML and it's going to be changed. It's going to be overwritten. It's going to clear out whatever was in there and replace it with something new. So in this case, the cards or the card back, depending on what the situation may be. So next up, we need to do a show windscreen. So in order to do that, we're actually going to have to go back into HTML. We actually need to add something here. So it's still going to be within the main, but there is going to be a new div in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a div and we're going to give it the class of win container. There we go. And we're going to put in there you win. Simple as that. Okay. So we're going to go to the CSS and we're going to go to the class and say win container. And first of all, what I want to do is I want to set the display or, or, the, or the, the grid to be like proper. So we're going to say grid. So here it is. So what I want to do is put it here in the middle, but I also want to remove four other cards because this is going to interfere. Obviously we want the four cards behind this to disappear. So in order to do that, we also need to use some JavaScript. I'm just going to put in some more HTML here to make it look nice. So there we go. There's a background color in there as well. There's a display setting. So we want it to be hidden by default. The border is going to be black, just like all the other borders. 
and we are going to set it to one pixel and then we also want to set text transform uppercase we want it to be big we want the font family to be roboto we can change it if to anything we want really the text color needs to be white we want to justify the content center we want to align the item center which means that this is going to vertically align this is going to horizontally align uh, the text within the div. So um, another thing that we want to do, like you'll see here what happens. So if we set it to display flex, it's gonna put the text in the center. If we were to put this to display block, uh, yeah, not so much luck. But if we put it to flex and do justify content and align items, which are flex properties, then we can actually center the text perfectly well. So that's cool. So it's gonna be set to flex, but before that, it's going to be none. We don't want it to display at all. We just want it to be like this. So next up, what we want to do in, I think this wasn't, yeah, show win screen. So we need to run another function, function, and then, uh, hold on a second. That's not going correctly. Function, show win screen, yes. And inside there, what we want to do is we want to hide four of the buttons, the four center buttons. So that's going to be button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So six, seven, and tw eleven and twelve. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to do a document dot get element by ID, and we want to select the IDs of the particular things that we're looking for. So we want to select ID, what was it, uh, six. And what we want to do is we set, want to set the, the style, yeah, style dot display. And we want to set it to flex, or sorry, none. So we want to set that to none. Okay, so that's what happens when show windscreen runs. I'm just gonna run show windscreen here right now so that you can see what happens. So it just removes one button, okay? So it removes the sixth one. Uh, I'm actually going to double check that it, that is the sixth one. I'm just going to comment that one out and let's see. So that is button six, seven, ten, and eleven. Okay, so six, seven, ten, and eleven. So we're going to just do this. Six, seven, ten, and eleven are all going to be set to display none when this function runs. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to set that particular query or, or that particular document thing. So this document or query selector win container. So we're selecting the win container class, all right, from CSS. We're going to add its style or edit its style, sorry, set the display to flex. Okay, so that's very simple. When we win now, show win screen is going to run and we're going to pop it up in the screen. So I'm just going to set if match is equal to one. So we only have to get one match. So let's see if I can get a match. There we go. What happens now? You see that this you win thing pops up and you know that's all so with that done uh, the only thing left is to add a button so i'm gonna figure out how to get that done and uh, i'll show you guys in just a minute okay guys so this is what i have done first of all i'm adding a button to the div so next to the you win you're getting a button that has a class play again we're going to change the css that in just a second and on click with the function reset that's being run. That function reset is here. So this is function reset. And what it does is it sets the last known button ID to undefined, the last known button number to undefined. It resets false to fa wait to false. It resets the, uh, all the numbers, like it shuffles it again. It distributes the numbers over the data sets again. Then it matches the, it sets the matches to zero. Then it loops through all the buttons and sets all the images back to the card back. And it all sets the background color back to white. Then the document query selector, I select the win container, set that back to display none. And then finally set all the other buttons that were hidden back to display block. And with all that done, now everything works. I've currently set it to, to, to show the windscreen at matches one. So let's just find a match. You know what? Let's just use the inspect element here. Um, so let's take a good look at this. So let's see. We want to use data number values. So this is a three and this is a three. And now you can see this pops up and we can play again and it just resets everything back to normal. So that's very cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stylize that just a little bit. So let's go in here. 
let's uh, set by default it to be not displaying none but flex so we can actually change the button right so it's going to be class play again and we're going to change it so that it looks a little bit better to depart so first of all background is going to be white and there we go so the background is going to be white it's going to have a little padding so padding let's say one rem uh yeah that looks good uh or actually we're going to say 0.5 i think that's a little better yeah that's a little better we're going to say font family roboto okay so we're going to change the font family we're going to set the uh, let's set text transform uppercase that's also something that we're going to do and finally let's set actually i don't want the background to be white let's put the background to be my color red which is a zero zero like so we also want the color so the text we want that to be white then instead and we want to remove the border so border none so that removes the border uh although uh let me take a good look at this because border none uh actually we want to set it to one pixel white solid okay that's what we're gonna do so that sets it to a solid white pixel actually we're gonna just say black you know just like the borders across all the buttons although hold on a second where's that border coming from black and we're saying one pixel which means that all the other borders are two pixels i am not quite sure yeah this is no this is set on the win container hold on a second i'm looking here at the buttons so all the buttons i want to have a border as well hold on a second so solid black and one pixel so they first didn't have a border at all now they do well they did but hidden now they all have a border and it's all one pixel and that's all cool so actually i'm going to set that to two do i want to set that to two i don't know if i want to set that to two i think i want to set that to two because this is going to be one and that's going to be no 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 no. i do want to set it to one okay cool so now you get this nice grid layout and when you press play again boom you go back to what it was before so that's very cool so with that done uh the entire memory game is pretty much done. You could also add a title to the top if you want to. Uh, I personally have done, done that with this one. There is my other memory game. I'll feature that in the GitHub down below as well. That's the completely finished one uh, with uh, an extra banner at the top that says memory. So if you want to play that, then go right ahead. Also, you can check out my website now under code projects. It also shows up. So that's very cool. You can play the game there if you want to, but I've been rambling up for quite so long. So I'm going to finish it up here. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something and enjoyed this little series of the memory JavaScript project. Uh, let me know if you want to see any other type of games or something in the comments down below. I'm currently working on a small little hangman project, but it's currently kind of difficult to do but i am learning so um with that said again thank you for watching and hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next one peace